Hi everybody, welcome back to this Redgate video. My name's Ryan Springett, and today I'm going to be showing you through Redgate Test Data Manager Standard. In this video, we'll be covering how we can build masking sets or subsetting sets or treatments for our databases to perform our test data management practices. Now, the first thing we need to do is create ourselves a database model. I'm going to make a new one. I'm going to call it New World DB. And it could be SQL Server, Postgres, MySQL, or Oracle. In this instance, it's a SQL Server database. I'll give it a connection string and test that connection. Perfect. Now, when it says initializing, this is essentially doing a schema scan. It's initializing uh, a background understanding of what this database holds inside it in terms of column names, table names, data types, and data lengths to figure out where the sensitive information might be and what type of sensitive information it is. But it's also looking at foreign keys, connections between our tables to figure out how the data links across the database. If we click into this, we can see there's currently zero treatments and it's gonna give us an opportunity to make some. We can create a new treatment and I'll call my first one, my subsetting treatment. I can choose to make this a subset of my data and create the treatment. Now, because we already did that uh, schema scan or we created that database model, it already knows about the foreign keys. It already knows about the connections in the database. So it's nice and quick. But it's first going to give us an option to make a 10% subset of this database. I'd rather go in a little bit more detail. And I can either say, give me 10%, give me 1%, give me 0.1%. Or I can give it an actual gigabyte range to aim for, five gigabytes. But I can go one step further if I'd like to as well with a custom subset. We can add starting tables. Now, starting tables allow us to say, look at the customer's table and only bring me back customers who are 25 years old. What it's going to do is follow the connections from that table and bring back only the data related to these 25-year-old customers, etc. So we can do exactly that. Let's look down in our DBO schema and go to our customers table and give it a filter clause. We can see it's got a grayed out uh, example option of what we can do here. And I'm gonna follow it quite similarly, but where age is greater than 25, we can add that. Now, perhaps I want to make this a little bit more in depth. I want any of my customers that are greater than 25, but also I want to bring in anyone that was dealt with by an employee called Ryan. I can build this as well. So now this subset is going to grab both the customers that are over 25 and anything they're connected to, but also the employees that are called Ryan and anything they're connected to. We can save that as our options file and we can run that subset from here. Before we do that, I'd like to go ahead and show you a classification or a masking treatment as well. So we can create a new one and call it my masking treatment. And then we're going to say select or replace my sensitive data. Because we've already done that schema scan behind the scenes or made that database model, it's lightning fast. And it's split up the sensitive information it's been able to find into different overarching groups, contact information, location data, and personal information in this instance. We can see a nice overview for our larger databases quickly, how many phone numbers it's found, and how many countries it found, and how many full name fields it found. But we might want to go into a bit more detail than this to see how it's done behind the scenes. We do that with the advanced configuration. This is going to show me every single column in my database and whether it thinks it's sensitive. And if it does, what type of sensitive information it thinks it is based on the rules that are baked into the engine behind the scenes. If I'd like to filter this, I can do so by looking at only things that have a data set applied. I can say, show me everything except where I've got no data replaced. If I scroll to the bottom, we can see that we've got 29 individual locations that we've found a column to be sensitive. Now, of course, I can go ahead and change these by hand if I'd like to. Perhaps I think contact name isn't a full name. It's in fact just a given name. And 
I don't like the fact that postcodes aren't being masked deterministically. I want them to be masked across the database in the same way every, every time so that we don't lose connections between data in different tables. Or in fact, I've decided I want that to be true for everything. I can do that too. Enable determinism in bulk. I can save this change and unselect all of these. Now, perhaps I don't like facts. I don't like the fact that we're masking it with a phone number. I can drop this down and look for a fax number, but we don't have one. Now, these could be quite similar, but perhaps there's a niche difference for me. So I could create a data set. We'll call this fax numbers. Now I can create a pattern based data set, which is going to be perfect for things like a fax number. And I'll say I want five digits and then three and then three. But I also want the option where customers might have bracketed those first five for some reason or bracketed the last two groups of three. What this is going to do is pick random digits for each of those wildcard characters for each of those hashtags. But first, it's going to pick one of those three options in the pattern based data set and then go ahead and make our data. Similarly, we can create a list data set. If I don't want those patterns anymore, I could go and by hand write out individual fax numbers that I'd like it to be masked with. Perhaps I'm not bothered about them being randomized and I just want it to always be the same. One, two, three, four, five. 678901 <clears throat> and save that as what I want all of my fax numbers to become. And now, if I go back and change the way that I'm filtering this, I can see I've got my fax numbers here. And if I wanted to, I can now see this at the bottom as one of my custom data sets. And I can save this. If I go back to my treatments page, I can see all the treatments I've got available to myself here. Again, if I want to run them, I can do that here as well, or I can export these as a JSON, and this will be a bit more familiar. We can now see that exactly what the CLI uh, version of doing this work sees behind the scenes. It's all the columns in my database and whether I think they're sensitive or not. <clears throat> so, Thank you very much for watching this demo and we'll see you in the next video.